It's actually starting to eat my finger now. Oh my god, it actually does have your finger tight. Yeah. Of... Oh my gosh, that is a huge clutch of my greatest. <laughs> Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. It is time to take down my screen here and see what exactly is going on with my girl Lucy here because I'm not gonna lie to you, there's a little bit of bad news. And what I mean by that is if you notice, it looks like Lucy is going into shed. So I'm actually gonna go inside, get a little bit of a closer look. I talked to my vet the other day. She's actually coming tomorrow to take a look as well and we're just gonna see what's going on. Now typically what happens is when snakes go into a shed, it's almost like they're trying to repair something something right like if they get a wound they'll go back into shed the fact that Lucy is going opaque again tells me that unfortunately she is absolutely egg bound I mean for whatever reason she didn't lay the rest of her clutch so we're gonna go inside get a little bit of a look of what's going on try to problem solve this and tomorrow my vet will talk about it see what our next steps are maybe our next steps are just to wait to see what happens sometimes snakes just stop sometimes they twist their overduct sometimes they tear their overduct sometimes there's a fold in the overduct we don't really know what's going on so I'm gonna go and take a look I'm gonna get air Eric and Bruce to help me out a little bit here and uh Oh, guys, this is like worst case scenario. This is almost exactly why I didn't want to breed Lucy is because I didn't want there to be complications because if my vet says it here in another week or two, we may have to do surgery on her to get those eggs out. Let's go inside. She is not going to be in a good mood, but uh, let's, let's just check it out. So no time like the present. Let's get in here and just see what we can do. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh, this, I don't know if this is gonna work. I don't know, I was originally thinking if I could maybe get her to where I can see what she's got going on, but I'll be honest with you, she is, uh, she does not look like she's gonna allow that at all. I've gotta somehow f like feel what's going on with those eggs. See if they're close to the vent or if they're pushed back, because if they're close to the vent, you might be able to aspirate them out, but if they're closer up, what? Oh my gosh. Guys, can you get me a paper towel roll? I'm gonna get the old handy dandy paper towel roll here, just as protection, because she is so fired up right now. Oh my gosh. Holy moly. Come on, girl, you've gotta go that way. Jesus. This is so messed up. See what she's got going on. See if there's any way I can get her. So may, I might be able to just keep her in her cage and actually feel around for her. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, I tell you what, this is crazy. I don't know what I'm even gonna do here. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Just calm down for me, baby. I, I tell you what, when she's like this, I, I mean, this kind of goes short. Like, how are we going to anesthetize the snake if we have to do surgery? I have no idea what we're going to do, but I'm getting a closer look over here. Ah, uh, you can see she is just fired up like no other. Wow. Tell you what, guys, this is uh, this is next level. I mean, I've never seen her like this at all. But again, I've got to feel those eggs, so I've got no choice but to keep going. And hopefully, I don't get bit. We'll have to just we're gonna have to see what happens. I don't know. I don't even know what to do here. Like, I don't even know what how I need to attack this thing. Okay, girl. It's okay. It's okay. Come on. Come on. Okay, got her tail in now. You can start to feel what she's got going on here. Whoa! Okay. Okay. 
All right, uh, so this is the deal, guys. I could definitely feel that the eggs are close to the vent. I can't tell if they're right at the vent or not, but you can see how swollen she is, like, right here, which tells me she's pushed all of her eggs right down here. I think it's a good sign, to be honest with you, but the fact that she's in shed tells me, again, that she's definitely egg-bound. Get a little bit of opinion from the vet, but look at, she's just mouth open, ready to roll. If I get any closer, it's just gonna be ridiculous. My hook is down here. I think for now, guys, that's that's where I'm gonna leave it. I mean, I got a good feel for what's going on in there. Uh, they're definitely still soft, which is a good sign, so uh, I'll be able to at least update the vet tomorrow with what I felt, get her opinion on what the next steps are, and uh, hopefully with any luck, my girl will start to plop an egg out here or there. The clutch is gone. It's not gonna be good at this point. Completely gone. This is exactly why I didn't really want to breed Lucy last year and was reluctant this year again, is because, you know what? I don't care about the clutch of eggs. I don't care about the babies. What I care about is her life. I don't want anything to happen to her. So let's hope she'll pass those eggs. Maybe getting her moving like this will actually agitate her enough to start pushing those eggs out. I don't know. And guys, again, egg binding happens with snakes. It's not like she didn't like the cage. Moving her to her old cage would have been the worst thing because it would have stressed her out that much more. I mean, she had a spot where she would certainly lay, which is similar to what they would lay like in the wild. So it's not like a cage thing or an environment thing. It's just, this is what happens. Sometimes when you breed snakes, they get egg bound. And we don't know why until she either passes the egg or we go in there in surgery and find out what's going on. We won't know what the actual cause is. But as for now, I'm gonna leave Lucy alone and uh, we'll wait for tomorrow and we'll talk to the vet. It's that time again, guys, collecting some colubrid eggs. We're gonna start with this head albino scaleless corn snake that is bred to an albino scaleless corn. Let's see what she's got. Oh my gosh, that is a gorgeous clutch of eggs. Oh my gosh, I love it. I tell you what, it's such an amazing experience. Every time I open up a box and see a clutch of eggs, I just love it to death and it never gets old. But you know, I wanted to spend a little time with you as I'm collecting several colubrid clutches today talking about you know what kind of inspired me to get started with breeding snakes and I've told the story a little bit so for those of you that heard it all right you can hear it again for those of you that haven't you guys will get to know me a little bit better but anyways let's go ahead and count these eggs really quick two four six eight ten twelve beautiful eggs no slugs from that female that is absolutely a great way to start my day Eric, what what are you doing again oh Every just, time I come just out hanging here. yeah it's actually starting to eat my finger now oh my god it actually does have your finger kind yeah, of all the way down this is is this a female that she laid or she's just yeah it's a female uh let's see here no she hasn't laid yet so oh my god well it looks like she needs a little food uh, good protein how's that feel it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good what are you gonna do now <laughs> we'll probably take it over run it under some uh you know cold or warm water and it should let right go so okay, well get that hopefully. off that poor snake is going to eat your whole finger if you don't i know i can't believe it tastes that good huh <laughs> And here's the first Arizona Mountain King Snake clutch of the year. This is actually just a normal that's bred to an albino Arizona Mountain King. Let's see which laid. Oh, yeah! I love it. That is great. Last year, we didn't have a really good Arizona Mountain King Snake year. So the fact that we have the first clutch being really good is truly an amazing sign. And hopefully, one that means that the rest of the year will be incredible, too. Let's see how many eggs we have. Two, four, six, seven good eggs. That is a really good clutch. And basically, guys, you know, I, it's not that I just wanted to breed snakes because I wanted to create a business or make a ton of money. Really what it was is I just wanted to work with animals. And at the time, it was just an opportunity. You gotta remember that goes way back into the late 80s, early 90s, when there really wasn't a reptile business per se. It was just kind of a fledgling hobby. In the entire state of Michigan where I grew up, there was like two pet shops that carried reptiles. All the other pet shops didn't carry reptiles or any reptile supplies. This was before ZooMed, before Exoterra, before Zilla, all the companies that made all these products. So obviously there wasn't really Really a market there. I just thought, hey, maybe I could make a few bucks so I can continue to work with animals and then eventually maybe I become a zookeeper or a vet or I didn't know what exactly. I just knew that reptiles were an opportunity to maybe make a few bucks to pay my way through college and that hopefully an opportunity would arise that I could work with animals the rest of my life. And we actually got two Mexican black king snake clutches so you guys know you love the Mexican black king snakes. So let's see what we have here. The first clutch is a nice clutch here. This is a little bit of a smaller girl so she laid a beautiful clutch eggs take a look at that there's two four six beautiful eggs let's go ahead and take a look at the mama make sure she's okay good job mom you did so amazing definitely is going to need a little bit of food she looks like she's pretty wore out but again king snakes do that so it's really common for them to look really kind of beat up and after a couple of meals she is going to look just 
just as right as rain, and hopefully with any luck we'll breed her again. So basically, again, it wasn't like I set out to breed snakes for a living. I just set out to do something that I could do that could continue to let me do what I love, which is working with animals. And I really never thought in a million years that all these years later, I would still be breeding snakes. I always thought that I would move on to something else in the more traditional animal world. I didn't even think about TV or anything of that back at the time because that was pre-internet. So there wasn't YouTube and there was none of that. So the opportunity to do television was really, really small. I mean, there was a couple TV shows that were wildlife, like Mutual of Omaha and stuff like that. It was even before Steve Irwin. So the opportunities weren't really there. I just thought I'd eventually probably find my way into a zoo, to be honest with you. And then this next Negritus is absolutely a huge female. Look at the size of her. And she doesn't even look that bad. But oh, I tell you what, she is feisty right now. She is ready for a meal. So I definitely want to get a meal into her right away because the sooner I get her some food, the quicker she's going to rebound and hopefully produce a second clutch. With the way she looks, oh yeah, she is definitely ready to go. Let's go ahead and see how many eggs there are. I'm expecting a really good clutch. Oh my gosh, that is a huge clutch of Nigritas. Ooh, doggy. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen eggs. Wow, that has to be a record for me. I don't think I've ever had a thirteen egg clutch before. That is truly incredible. But I guess the reason I was talking about this adventure of breeding snakes and stuff like that, it's about kind of capturing opportunities. I kind of like it in a weird way. Don't get me wrong. It's not exactly like this. If you bought into Amazon stock when it first opened, you just were in the right place at the right time. And that's kind of what happened to me with the reptile world, right? I was in the right place at the right time when it was a hobby, just starting to become a business. And I just saw the opportunity like, oh my God, I love working with snakes. I love breeding and hatching snakes. I've always loved that. So why not make this into a potential business? And as my hobby grew into a business, the hobby itself exploded in popularity. And I was really just in the right place at the right time. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean that I didn't work my butt off because the one thing that everyone has kind of said about me that knows me is I'm always one of the hardest working guys that anyone met. This happens to be a het strawberry diffuse corn bred to a het strawberry diffuse corn. Let's see what she has here. Oh yeah, beautiful egg. Looks like one little slugger. That's the first slug of the day and this is actually the last clutch of the day too. So let's go ahead, get this female out of here, see what she's got going on and see what we ended up with. Again, it looks like there's only one bad egg but let's go ahead and pull this clutch really quick. Okay, not bad at all. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven good eggs, and one little slug. And again, you can really see the difference. That's a real kind of like gummy type of thing. Let's check the female out, make sure she's in good shape. There you go, girl. All right, sweetheart. You did so good, mama. Way to go. And not a bad way to end the day of egg pulling, too. And again, I just want to continue to always inspire you guys that when opportunity arises, it's all about taking that opportunity. The same thing with YouTube. You know, we started YouTubing in the very beginning when there was really no other reptile channels on YouTube really so we just said hey that's an opportunity we did the same thing with Facebook Instagram Twitter all that type of stuff and I think it's just one of those things that you know you go after things that you're really excited about and you hope that they all work out right and in this case it worked out because three decades later here I am still doing it now the reptile business side of things isn't as big a part of my life when it comes to the actual business side of it but it's certainly a big part of my life when it comes to breeding I'm gonna be honest with you I enjoy this part of breeding hatching all that other stuff so much more now that it's not my living now that I don't pay my bills with it because now it's almost just like a glorified hobby I absolutely love this and with that being said that concludes the story time of this vlog as well as the clubert egg pulling of this vlog ball python clutches keep on coming that's for sure but I've never quite seen this before I'm not exactly <laughs> sure what kind of a coil that is right there that is one crazy thing I, I don't know what mama's doing there uh, definitely gonna have to candle that one because I can guarantee you that the embryo isn't on top here and it's literally like adhered and everything that is so weird so anyways this is obviously a pastel what was she bred to a fire bee a fire bee so of course that would be a pastel a fire and a spider uh, so we could get some killer fire bees and all kinds of different stuff. Oh, that egg just dropped a little bit oh that's a nice clutch right there it was a much larger clutch than I expected because the female was kind of laying down on it didn't really see it so wow that's a nice clutch obviously this one right here we're definitely going to candle just to make sure that that's okay but I'm pretty sure that's where it's going to be the actual embryo right there Kelsey's just kind of getting these guys off of the paper right here got a nice clutch here absolutely gorgeous good job mom you did really good and we ended up with one two three four 
Eight. Eight beautiful eggs, and that's the last clutch of the day? Yes. Okay, good. Lots more females to come, so uh, eight more eggs added to the incubator. I tell you what, guys, I'll go ahead and end the vlog here, and I will keep you updated on Lucy and everything else that's going on. Again, my vet comes tomorrow. I don't think we're going to get any major answers, but we're going to start to kind of work our way through it, and hopefully there'll be a good solution that ends up keeping Lucy healthy. That's it. I will never breed her again. I'm not going to even take that risk. I do not want to lose that animal, so fingers crossed. Continue to send positive vibes to me. As for now, have a wonderful day. You guys are absolutely incredible, and I love you so much. Be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.